Peter Berlinger, welcome to Hard Talk. Thank you for having me. Let's start with a big picture of German politics today. In some ways, nothing much has changed. Here we are again facing uh, a grand coalition led by Angela Merkel with the Christian Democrats and the SBTD together. But actually, are things really quite different this time? Well, we're not even there. We don't have that coalition yet, but yes, I guess, well, yeah, I guess you're right. We're, we will have that pretty soon. Uh, and having said that, I would agree that it's no longer the same. Uh, we have now a coalition of official losers. Both the SPD and the CDU of Angela Merkel have lost uh, more than 15% at the general election last autumn. And in the meantime, they have lost even more. You could say they have lost more than 20% of the vote since 2013. So it is, it is, of course, a different situation, absolutely. What's your strategy in the AFD? Are you going to be spoilers looking for a fight, or are you going to try to be constructive? Because you now are, in essence, the biggest opposition party. Oh, we are, but uh, fight is not uh, an end in its own right, of course. Uh, so we're not fighting just for the sake of fighting. Uh, we're fighting for bringing Germany back on a legal track uh, where laws are not violated all the time, especially when it comes to the Euro uh, rescue and uh, the border controls and the immigration. And we're also trying to bring back a, a little more direct dem democracy, that is, that the people have a say um, in the Bundestag again, which they didn't have for a long time. Your, um, your bedfellows in Europe, I guess, are the National Front in France, uh, the Austrian Freedom Party, Fiat Wilders' party in the Netherlands. Many people in your country and across this continent are extraordinarily worried about the power and influence you can now wield. Well, actually, we're latecomers in Germany. It is very late that Germany has ultimately come up with a central right uh, new party, uh, sticking to the uh, values and virtues that uh, were normal in Europe uh, up until the 1990s and 2000s. Well, no, they're uh, not look right. Look you're, you're far right. Well, I've just listed your bedfellows. They're, they're all far right. Many people would say extremist parties. I, I, I would have to look into each and every one of them, and God wills is uh, diff completely different <laughs> from Marine Le Pen and from the Austrian rights. Uh, that's probably going too far now. But well, why, the way, the why, way I, in what way are you completely different? The way I see it is that uh, we, and I personally too, have not changed my political opinion in 20, 30, 40 years at all. I only stick to a world where the nation state was undisputedly the natural state of affairs, where uh, this was nobody disputed that. No party. Uh, we have a program, and I was a member of AFD's uh, program commission, uh, that the CDU had up until 2005, and even the SPD had in the 1990s. So we are not extremists. Uh, that was normal at the time. We didn't change. Society has changed, and especially the, the um, well, the, the media perception. Well, no, I'm not talking about media perceptions. I'm talking about perceptions of, of significant people. For example, let me quote you on Charlotte Knobloch, uh, who is a former president of the Council of German Jews. She describes your party, the AFD, as a destructive power which endangers democracy. Well, I don't know what crystal ball Mrs. Knobloch has, but uh, she cannot see in the future. She has no evidence uh, I guess she whatsoever. She can, words of, of what, whatsoever she can. Members. Well, you can always put individual words out of context. Uh, but I don't see it that way. Our program is not radical at all. It is uh, absolutely uh, bourgeois, I would say, in the positive sense of the word. Well, I suppose then we need to test you against some of the things that senior leadership figures in your party have said in the I recent I hope you past. put it into context. Well, let's see. Let's see. That's what usually is not that, being done. Now that you're the main, <laughs> biggest opposition party, let's see whether the tone and style of the party is beginning to change. For example, let's take one of your senior figures, Bjorn Hooker. A regional <laughs> he, he's party. always quoted, even though he's not a senior figure. 
Well, he is a senior. No, he's in his in, no, his, not, lander, in his region. No, he's, he's not a senior. Figure. Well, he's one of sixteen uh, regional figures. Yes. yes. Well, there you mm. go. He and he's quoted all the time. Mm. Yeah. Well, you know, you, maybe then you know what mm. I'm going to ask you: whether you now distance yourself from his comment when he described the Holocaust Memorial in Berlin as a monument of shame, and he suggested that Germany shouldn't have put it up, and no other nation would have put it up. He put it like that, and uh, well, it's a memorial shame. It's one of the worst uh, periods of German history, and uh, no, but you know what he meant. He meant it was a shame that it had been erected. It was a shame. Uh, I don't know what he meant. He said that uh, this was uh, no other country would put up a memorial for the worst period of their um, of its history. I wouldn't have put it that way, but that's what he meant. All right, a, a last one on this style. Mm -hmm. It's important, I think, to find out whether, now that you are the biggest opposition party, your language is going to change. As a party, I'm going to quote to you uh, Stefan Brandner. Now, he's important because, as an MP, he's now going to be chairman of the Judicial Committee. He referred some time ago to the Green Party as child molesters and cokeheads. He has been suspended frequently from his regional parliament when he was serving there because of his outrageous behavior. Is it... Do you think wise to put him into a position such as committee chairman of the Judicial Committee? Well, it was not my decision. It was the decision of the so-called Ältestenrat, the elder uh, council of the Bundestag. And they put him in that position. Uh, nobody disagreed, not even the lefts and the greens themselves. <laughs> nobody disagreed. It was only at the election proper, at the uh, initial meeting the, uh, uh, of that committee uh, that it was disputed uh, for whatever reason. This is the first time this happened in 60 years in German history. Uh, same for me. Uh, for no reason at all. Um, we have seen former Nazis in the 1950s heading those councils. We have seen former uh, communists from the SED uh, murder party uh, in the 1990s. Nobody was ever disputed. And some people who got a few calls uh, in regional parliaments and even me, who, who did nothing at all, basically, were disputed just because we were AFD members. And this, let, let me this, put it this, this way. This is the treatment uh, AFD is uh, well, all the time. Let, let me put it this way. Do you acknowledge that the party is going to have to change? And that part of that change is going to be different <laughs> style, tone, and language. And maybe some members of the party who were senior figures in the past, mm -hmm. will not be in the future. Yes, I would agree there, but that's normal with almost every party. Yes, we have to become more professional, uh, but ultimately you have to understand that uh, the tone and the brutality is, not, is only a reaction uh, from our side against the brutality of the ruling class. Uh, they oh, break no, the laws no. all the time, and it is uh, us who give the people who are really furious about developments in, U in Germany, especially. But, but you can't say voice. that and all sometimes, of your... uh, Especially if you are a, a not yet parliamentary in a position, uh, which we had been up until uh, well, 2014. Um, so, you have to use a little stronger language. All opposition parties have done that in the. I'm so lonely,